I recently made and shared a video about things that you should do if you want to have a successful Appalachian Trout through hike. Today, I want to talk about some things that you should not do if you want to have a successful Appalachian Trout through hike. Hey guys, if you're new to the channel, welcome. Thanks for being here. I'm Audrey, known as Glow Stick on Trowel. In 2018, I quit my job and through hiked the Appalachian Trail from Georgia to Maine. It was freaking amazing. If you are coming back to the channel, thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate the support. Let's get into the six things that you should not do to have a successful through hike. Number one, don't do too many miles too fast right out the gate. If you go too far too fast, that's going to lead to injury. We've all seen it. Those of us that have been on long trails, you will see, especially the young 20 somethings with ultralight gear doing 20, 30 mile days right out the gate. And then suddenly you will catch up to them in a town, even though you were doing significantly fewer miles because they've gotten injured in the process. Don't be one of those people. Injury is one of the number one reasons that people get off the trail. You don't want that to be you. So to prevent that, do some nice and easy miles to start out with, slowly build up. On the AT, I was told start out doing eight to 10 miles per day, build up from there. And that is exactly what I did. I even doing those like lower miles, I had some knee issues at the beginning of the trail, nothing serious, nothing that I had to take more than a day or two off from at a time. But definitely I saw a lot of those young ultralighters getting injured because they were doing big, big miles right out the gate. Don't be one of those people. Number two, don't spend too much money too fast. Make sure that you have enough money to be on trail and that you have a budget so you know what you're spending your money on. You're not just spending it frivolously and you wind up running out of money because running out of money is one of the other biggest reasons that people get off the trail. So make sure that you know what you're gonna spend on a weekly basis, a monthly basis, make sacrifices if you're spending too much at a time, make sure you have money in case you need to go get an injury or an illness checked out, make sure you have extra in case something breaks and you need to replace it, or you need to spend some time in a hotel or a hostel because you've gotten an injury or you're sick. A lot of things can come up on the trail that you might not expect. So make sure that you are budgeting for those types of emergencies or you know just things that you need to replace. And just because other people are spending left and right, they're just throwing money around, doesn't mean that you have to. Know what is within your means and what is not. You don't have to get a hotel room if you can't afford it. You can just you know, go into town, resupply, find a cheap place for a shower and hike on out. Take a zero in the woods. That could be a lot of fun. Don't be one of those people that just spend all their money on beer and restaurant food and hotels when you actually cannot afford it because you know it's gonna feel a whole lot better than eating a restaurant meal or getting a hotel when you really don't have the money for it. Finishing the trowel. So don't spend all your money in one place. Make sure you have a budget, make sure you have a plan and you're keeping an eye on your finances. Number three, don't stay with people or trowel family, other hikers that are not serving you. If something isn't meshing well, they wanna do more miles than you. They wanna do less miles than you. They wanna spend more money than you. They wanna spend less money than you. Your personalities aren't meshing. You're not getting along. Whatever it is, don't stay with people just because you don't wanna be alone. There are so many people out on the AT. It is such a social trail and it is so easy to make friends out there. You know, stay the night at a shelter, stay the night at a popular campsite. Go have dinner with people. If you see a group of people in town, go up and see if you can eat with them or share a hostel room or a hotel with them, whatever it is. But don't stay with people just because you're afraid of not being with people. You will find a better match for you out there. And if you stay with a trout family that's, you know, forcing you to do extra miles, forcing you to spend extra money, they're just not making you happy or they're not serving your interests in some way, get out of there. Go meet some different people. Don't be tied down to people that are not gonna mesh with you. 
On the flip side, don't isolate yourself, especially if you're struggling with things. The AT has such a strong community. Everyone looks out for each other. Everyone wants to help each other. Don't push people away. Unless you're a loner who just wants to be alone out on the trail, but then in that case, the AT may not be for you because there are so many other people out there, thousands of people each year attempt to through hike. Especially if you are starting in sort of the normal northbound bubble that's starting between like mid-March and mid-April, there are plenty of other people around that are going to want to help you, want to talk with you if you're having a bad day, want to talk with you if you're having a good day, who are going to relate to your experience. So take advantage of that and be open to making friends. I made lifelong friends on the AT. My hike was in 2018 and I still talk to some of these people literally every single day. And many others I talk to often or sometimes or whatever. I can't describe how genuine and amazing the community is out there. So take advantage of that. You don't have to struggle alone if struggling is what, what you're doing. You don't have to enjoy things alone if you don't want to. People always ask me like, oh, were you alone out there? Did you meet other people? And the answer is a resounding yes. There are just so many other people in the same boat as you, living the same experience as you, who would probably love to be a part of your experience. So let those people in. Don't go through it alone. Number five, this is a big one and a tough one. Don't just eat crap on the trail. It is so tempting to just eat junk food because that's the easiest and the lightest and the cheapest. And it's kind of a novelty to go out there and be burning off every single thing that you're eating and more and just think like, oh, I can eat whatever I want. You know, maybe for the first time in your life, in my case, I was like, oh, I can eat whatever I want because I'm doing so much exercise all the time that it doesn't matter. It does matter. <laughs> Even if the junk food is not making you pack on the pounds. It's doing other things to your body to your detriment. It can destroy your energy levels. It can make your immune system not work as well. It can lead to your muscles breaking down. I saw this in some of the guys out on the trail. One of my close friends out on the trail, head chef, who I hiked with from Georgia to Maine, his muscles started breaking down and he smelled like ammonia. He was losing weight so fast. And, and that's something that they warn you about if you're not getting enough protein and nutrients that can start happening. And it's not, it's not pretty, it's not good. Chef at this time, he was not doing well. I do not recommend that. I personally got anemia. My energy levels plummeted so bad. My hair started falling out. Luckily I have a ton of hair, my hair is so thick. It wasn't a big thing, but I was finding these, like every time I would take a shower, these just like massive clumps of hair, it was falling out because I had anemia. And the last thing that you want when you're out exercising all day, every day, is something like anemia that's gonna completely take your energy away. And women of childbearing age especially have to look out for anemia, we're very prone to it. Um, you could have other vitamin and nutrient deficiencies from eating crap all of the time. I came off the trail with high cholesterol, which I have never in my life had. I'm typically a very healthy eater. I eat a lot of whole foods. I eat a lot of fresh stuff. I'm a vegetarian, but eating all that crap on the trail for six months gave me anemia and high cholesterol, which I do not recommend because my body was not feeling at its best by the end of the trail, even though I was in the best, you know, shape of my life. My fitness was incredible. My cardio was incredible. It was incredible what my body could do, but at the same time, I was so exhausted. So take care of your body and try to get some nutrition in while you're out there. You know, make sure you're eating fresh foods when you go into towns. Get some dehydrated veggies and throw those into your meals. Um, you know, get some freeze dried black beans and throw the, those into some of your meals. If you're like me and you're a vegetarian and you're worried about getting enough protein, just, just try your best not to just live on like Doritos and Coca-Cola's every time you go into town or beers or whatever. Make sure you're actually getting some nutrients in. 
Don't be like me. I learned my lesson. Not gonna do that next time around. I'm gonna be better. And number six, don't overburden yourself by bringing a whole bunch of stuff that you don't need. I'm not saying don't bring any comfort items. My bag on the AT was pretty big and pretty heavy, mostly because I just didn't have ultra light gear. Um, but there are definitely things that you can do to leave behind the things that you don't need. For example, you could ask a backpacker who's done a through hike before to give you a shakedown and say, what's in my bag that you think that I don't need? You can also, you know, buy the lightest gear that you can afford. The AT is physically incredibly difficult. And I mean, that's the only long trail that I've done, but I've heard from Triple Crowners that the AT is physically the hardest of the three long trails in the US. It goes up and over mountains. A lot of times you're like, why, why? I'm just going up and down and up and down and up and down. Pointless ups and downs, we like to call them. <laughs> And it's physically exhausting. It's way more physically exhausting if you have a really heavy pack. So again, I'm not anti-comfort item, but I am pro being smart about the things that you bring. And if there are things in your pack that you are not using, get rid of that stuff. If there are things in your pack that you can comfortably, comfortably live without, get rid of that stuff. Don't overburden yourself. It's bad for morale. It can lead you more prone to injury and it can just make your experience a lot less fun. <laughs> so yeah, those are, my, those are my tips on six things not to do if you wanna have a successful Appalachian Trail through hike. If you've done a through hike yourself, I would love to hear your tips in the comments as well of other things not to do. If you haven't watched my video yet on the things that you should do in advance of a through hike to make you more likely to have a successful one, go back and watch that video. As always, thanks for watching guys. Thanks for your support. I, I always love to hear from you. So if you're doing a through hike next year, maybe year after you're planning something in the future, let me know that as well. Anyway, thanks for watching. I'll talk to you all later.